anticholinesterases. The nervous system is composed of two divisions, the central nervous system, which includes the brain and the spinal cord, and the peripheral nervous system, which includes all the nerves that connect the central nervous system to the muscles and organs. The peripheral nervous system is divided into the somatic nervous system, which controls voluntary movement of our skeletal muscles, and the autonomic nervous system, which controls the involuntary activity of the smooth muscles and glands of our organs and is further divided into the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems. Preganglionic neurons of the parasympathetic division have their cell bodies in either the brainstem or the sacral spinal cord. Preganglionic axons project to a series of ganglia located near or in the affected organs. All preganglionic neurons are cholinergic and release acetylcholine, which interacts at nicotinic receptors on the cell bodies of postganglionic neurons. Most postganglionic neurons of the parasympathetic division are also cholinergic. Receptors for the acetylcholine in the affected organs are muscarinic receptors rather than nicotinic receptors. Thus, acetylcholine released from preganglionic neurons of the parasympathetic division activates nicotinic receptors, whereas acetylcholine released from postganglionic neurons of the parasympathetic division activates muscarinic receptors. The nicotinic receptor is composed of five subunits and it functions as a ligand-gated ion channel. Binding of the acetylcholine molecules elicits a conformational change that allows the entry of sodium ions, resulting in the depolarization of the effector cell. The muscarinic receptor, on the other hand, is a membrane protein. Upon stimulation by a neurotransmitter, it causes the opening of ion channels indirectly through a second messenger. The signal at the postjunctional effector site is rapidly terminated because acetylcholinesterase cleaves acetylcholine to choline and acetate in the synaptic cleft. Acetylcholinesterase is an enzyme that specifically cleaves acetylcholine to acetate and choline and thus terminates its actions. It is located both pre- and postsynaptically in the nerve terminal where it is membrane-bound. Inhibitors of acetylcholinesterase indirectly provide a cholinergic action by prolonging the lifetime of acetylcholine produced endogenously at the cholinergic nerve endings. This results in the accumulation of acetylcholine in the synaptic space. Therefore, these drugs can provoke a response at all cholinoceptors in the body, including both muscarinic and nicotinic receptors of the autonomic nervous system, as well at neuromuscular junctions and in the brain. Examples of anticholinesterases include edrophonium, neostigmine, physostigmine, pyridostigmine, rivastigmine, galantamine and donapazil. Anticholinesterases are either organophosphates or carbamates. Organophosphates like parathion are often used as pesticides. The chemical weapon sarin gas also belongs to this group. The most clinically used anticholinesterases are carbamates, and they are either tertiary or quaternary amines. This is important because only the anticholinesterases with a tertiary structure can cross the blood-brain barrier and enter the brain. Edrophonium is the prototype short-acting acetylcholinesterase inhibitor. Edrophonium binds reversibly to the active center of acetylcholinesterase, preventing hydrolysis of acetylcholine. It is rapidly absorbed and has a short duration of action of 10 to 20 minutes due to rapid renal elimination. Edrophonium is a quaternary amine and its actions are limited to the periphery. It is used in the diagnosis of myasthenia gravis, a disease where antibodies bind to nicotinic receptors on skeletal muscle cells preventing acetylcholine from binding and therefore causing muscle weakness. This causes their degradation, making fewer receptors available for interaction with a neurotransmitter. This is termed competitive inhibition, meaning if we increase the concentration of acetylcholine, it can displace the antibodies off of the nicotinic receptors. So, if someone is suspected to have myasthenia gravis, 
we give edrophonium, which increases acetylcholine concentration in the synaptic cleft, causing a visible improvement in that person's muscle strength for a brief period of time. Physostigmine has a wide range of effects as a result of its action and stimulates not only the muscarinic and nicotinic sites of the autonomic nervous system, but also the nicotinic receptors of the neuromuscular junction. Its duration of action is about 2 to 4 hours, and it is considered to be an intermediate acting agent. Physostigmine can enter and stimulate the cholinergic sites in the central nervous system. The drug increases intestinal and bladder motility, which serve as its therapeutic action in atony of either organ. Placed topically in the eye, it produces meiosis and spasm of accommodation, as well as a lowering of intraocular pressure. It is used to treat glaucoma. Unlike physostigmine, neostigmine has a quaternary nitrogen. Therefore, it is more polar, is absorbed poorly from the gastrointestinal tract and does not enter the central nervous system. Its effect on skeletal muscle is greater than that of physostigmine. Neostigmine has an intermediate duration of action, usually 30 minutes to 2 hours. It is used to stimulate the bladder and gastrointestinal tract as an antidote for tabocurine and other competitive neuromuscular blocking agents. Neostigmine is also used symptomatically to treat myasthenia gravis. Donepazil, galantamine and rivastigmine are specifically indicated for Alzheimer's disease. That's because in patients with Alzheimer's disease have a deficiency of cholinergic neurons in the central nervous system. This observation led to the development of anticholinesterases as possible remedies for the loss of cognitive function. Despite the ability of donepazil, rivastigmine and galantamine to delay the progression of Alzheimer's disease, none can stop its progression. Do not forget to like the video and subscribe to our YouTube channel.